Hey guys, it's been a bit of a challenging few months for me and I've gone back and forth on whether or not I wanted to talk about this, whether or not I wanted to say what happened and I have just been praying about it and I really feel like as hard as this will be to get out there and just talk about it, I really feel like I'm supposed to share it and maybe some of you guys can find some hope in the middle of what I'm dealing with, maybe you're in this place too. And so, as you guys can tell by the title, I experienced a miscarriage. And I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with my channel or not, um, but Arvi and I had shared like three months ago, Arvi's my husband, if you don't know that, um, that we were gonna be trying for baby number two and we have a 10 month old son. And so in the process of that, about three months ago, I experienced something called a chemical pregnancy. And so, I just wanted to tell you guys what my experience was with that. I want to tell you guys how I'm doing and I wanted to share also some th things that the Lord has been teaching me through it and pray for you guys at the end. And so that's going to be kind of the construct today of what I am posting, but okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's like hard to talk about because I'm still kind of getting used to like the thought of what happened and so just bear with my rough cuts in this video <laughs> but so about when I was about four months postpartum or five months postpartum I was praying a lot about the next baby that RV and I were gonna have and I really felt like I received a word from the Lord that I was going to be pregnant seven months postpartum that was the exact word it was you will be pregnant seven months postpartum and so I held on to that really tightly and I wasn't sure if that meant that I was going to be pregnant like before seven months and I would just be pregnant or if I was going to find out I was pregnant at seven months postpartum and so I obviously did everything we did everything that we could we have been you know to have another baby and seven months postpartum rolled around and it was like the very end of the seven months and I was just thinking you know God always likes to do things last minute for me and so maybe that's what was going to happen and so sure enough that's what happened um I actually, I actually like filmed myself getting the positive pregnancy test and all the stuff that I took pictures of and stuff I deleted because it, I just didn't want to see it anymore. And so um, part of me wishes I wouldn't have done that, but then it is hard to look back at. And so right around that time where I would have been expecting to uh, be pregnant, or at least I thought I, I would have been if I was ovulating, you know, being postpartum, things are irregular anyway. Um, also, I was breastfeeding or I was pumping, so that also can prolong things as well. And also, actually, if you've experienced what I've experienced, it's actually, it's a bad, it's bad to say, but it's, com it's, it's fairly common because of the way that your hormones are working when you're breastfeeding or when you're pumping. And so, but I didn't expect this. I didn't even know what this was until it happened to me. But so, essentially, like... Right around the time where I was expecting it to happen, I started taking tests and I got back like very faint positive lines. And so I was really excited. This is what happened with Judah, my first son. And essentially I got like a bunch of faint positives until every day it got a little bit darker. So this is what happened with this one too. Um, I took a test, it was a faint positive. And so then I took like 14 more tests. I'm not kidding you guys, like I took a lot. <laughs> That's kind of how I am, I just take a lot of tests. And so over like the five days, like it was getting darker and darker and darker and darker. And then on the Sunday that the Sunday after I found out, which I think I found out on like a Wednesday or something, um, I start to notice that the test like stops like getting darker. Like you would expect it to be like very, very dark at this point. And that's what I was expecting too. Cause every day I would wake up and the test was darker and I was literally taking a test like three times a day just cause I was really excited. And I started to get a little bit worried and I had already um, told RV at this point, my husband, that I was pregnant and uh, we were like celebrating together. We went out for dinner. It was really awesome. And then I started to get a little bit worried because I was like, okay, why isn't this test darker this time around? You know, like why isn't it, it should be darker at this point. And so as I was looking at the test and I started to get like a little bit panicked. And so for the next like few days, like I can't really explain like how heavy that felt like something was wrong, like something was really wrong. And so I called like the OB and I talked to them and they said, well, you know, like it could be like, it could just be like a false positive, you know, or maybe the baby isn't a 
attaching correctly. And so, so I started to get really worried and this is like the first time I've told this story, by the way. So I'm trying to like hash my thoughts together, <laughs> like the full thing. Obviously Artie knows about it, but I've told like very few people, only really close friends or like select family members, just if it ever came up, um, cause people knew that we were trying. And so anyway, um, as I start taking tests the next day, two days, three days, like the tests get fainter and fainter and fainter. And like I've taken, I took like all different brands of tests, you know? And so I was like, after three days of seeing it, like get fainter and fainter and fainter, I started to like really be worried. And so then I had talked to the OB several times and they said, well, you know, like this is not the best thing to hear, but because you were breastfeeding and because, um, you are seven months postpartum and because, you know, a lot can happen. Like it may be that the baby just couldn't attach to your uterus because it wasn't ready. And so essentially, like if you've never heard of a chemical pregnancy before, which I had never heard of this either. I thought it was like, I had no idea what it was. Um, but it's basically when you miscarry the baby anywhere between four and five weeks. And it's like some, sometimes like people don't even know that this happens to them because you know, you'd have to be testing like right when you were expecting it. And so if you weren't expecting it, you may not know. But anyway, so as the days went on and I started to really think that something was wrong. So those like few days where I wasn't sure like um, what was happening, I just like, I just felt like so heavy, like just such a weight on my heart, like just extremely emotional, extremely sad and mostly disappointed because I knew something was wrong at this point and I didn't know what it was. And you know, as you guys can probably guess, like, you know, the rest of it occurred, but I just was so heavy. Like, and I don't know if you guys are like this, this is just me when I'm going through something that's a little hard is like, it's almost easier for me to like pretend like it didn't happen. And so like in my mind, because it was so early and because, you know, the OB had mentioned, well, you know, maybe it was like a false positive. Like I was thinking, okay, so I'm just going to run with that idea. I'm just going to run with that idea because it's so much easier for me to think that than to think that, that the Lord promised me a baby at seven months postpartum. And not only do I not have this baby, but I also don't have that fulfillment. And I know it's a little confusing because like, like I said, like the word was I was gonna be pregnant seven months postpartum, but I really held on to that. When I had Judah, my first son, um, I like feel like I got such a download from the Lord, like months before he was conceived that who he was gonna be and what he was like and everything that the Lord told me about him, including the fact that he was a boy came to pass. And so I, but I hadn't dug deep into like that word, like seven months postpartum, you know, like I hadn't really thought about it. I just thought, oh, okay, he's just giving me a heads up and here we go again, you know, and I was really excited. And so literally for like two weeks, like after that, I just refused to feel sad. I refused to feel disappointed. And I just acted in my mind, like nothing happened at all. Like I literally thought to myself, you know, this was a fluke, a random thing. I know this isn't common, but this did happen to me, you know? And like I said, like I took so many tests, like I was really truly just lying to myself and I can like see that now because that's how I was dealing with it. And so anyway, like two weeks ago, and I really believe this was the Lord just trying to get my attention because obviously it's not good for you to hold things in, you know? And, and so I was at a, um, our church thing and there was a, a woman there and she was talking to me about how she had miscarriage. She had three of them. And like, as she was talking to me about this, like I just started to feel like so sad. I'm like, sorry guys. I just started to feel like so sad and I didn't really know why. Um, Um, just because like it was bringing up like those emotions that I was feeling. I felt so sorry for her that she had these experiences. And then I started to really think about like, how do I feel about what may have happened? Like, I don't know. And, and when it's this early, right? Like it's hard because like there was no heartbeat right until six weeks, I think, or maybe it's eight. I don't know. But like, you don't have that ultrasound validation. And then like, it is so early. It's like, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of like ifs. And then like, you want to like, it's easier to be like, you know, it didn't happen. Um, than it is to like really be in that disappointment because that's where I was, you know, 
I'm still there. Um, <laughs> I thought about waiting to make this video until I get past it, um, until I feel better. But I was at, I was in church yesterday and I like didn't even listen to the sermon. I was just sitting there in the chair because the Lord was just telling me, like downloading to me, like, you know, like, I want you to talk about it because, um, and this is really hard for me. I was wrestling with him even today, like trying to make this video because he was wanting me to talk about it because he wanted me to just share what he's showed me so far. And so that's what I want to do. And anyway, I'm talking to this lady and I tell her what happened and she's, you know, she's like, you, she's like, you have to, you know, this is such a God thing for me that she said this to me. So, um, it's been hard since because I have like really owned what happened, but, um, you know, she just said like, you can't just do this to yourself. Like you can't just pretend like this didn't happen. You know, like you have to acknowledge that you have to work through it. It's not good for you, you know? And it's like, if there's anything like I need to hear in just my personality, it's that like, I just that validation that it's okay to be sad. And then like, you know, just like someone giving me permission to like feel that because I know I feel it, but I'm so good at making things feel like they're not there that it's like a, it's like a coping mechanism whenever I'm, I'm experiencing something hard. And so I just really wrestled with the Lord on this. And like I said, I was debating whether I should wait and whether I should share now. And I decided I want to share now because the Lord is just like reminding me, you know, in the middle of all this, like he is so close. He is so close in this time. And like, whenever I'm in like a season like this, where it feels just really hard, like there is just a sweetness with the Lord that I can't really explain. And if you don't know what that is, um, I encourage you to reach reach out to the Lord because he's always reaching out to us. And like, there is such a sweetness with him when you're experiencing like a sadness like this. And so I wanted to share kind of what he showed me because I'm not, I'm not over this yet. Um, it's hard for me to, like, um, to talk about this. Sorry. I'm not over it yet, but I think that that's, um, all the more reason for me to share what he showed me. And so, um, he, <laughs> he told me to flip open to Psalm 13. And so I feel like this might not just be for me, but maybe for some of you who've experienced this. And so, um, Psalm 13 says, how long Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long, Lord, will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes where I will sleep in death and my enemy will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. And I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. I know, like, maybe some of you guys, like, are waiting for that promise like I am and you feel disappointed and you feel like God doesn't hear you and you feel like he forgot you and you feel like he isn't listening and I just want you guys to know like in the middle of it right now like I know that there is hope in the Lord and in this he has strengthened my soul and he will and he's done it before and he's gonna do it again and the last thing that I should be doing and that any of us should be doing when this happens is to pull away to act like it didn't matter to, to, to not validate ourselves to make it's you know just to just to pull away entirely from the Lord no matter where you're at if you've you know miscarried this early or if you miscarried later on like or if you lost any children, you know, it's like, like one of the biggest things he said, and I just really feel like this is the word he wants you, me to give today for, maybe this will help you guys as it's helped me, but it's just the verse, you know, in um, Psalms 13, verse six, in all of this, you have strengthened my soul. And we might never understand why um, we lose babies we might never understand his plan and I'm not saying that he will never fulfill that desire in your heart or in my heart you know um 
I have a little boy now, so I'm I am blessed in, in that, and I love him, and you know it's I am grateful. But you know, some of you guys like you've been waiting a long time for the Lord's promise, and I don't understand how that feels entirely. But I know that any kind of loss, like it, just naturally makes you want to pull away. <laughs> And so I just really feel like the word today from the Lord um, in the middle of this for you and for me is just to know that he is going to strengthen our soul. He's going to He's going to fulfill every promise. Like he so laid that on my heart today when I was praying because I was praying for you guys and I was just praying about how I feel. And he so laid on my heart, you know, that he is going to fulfill every promise in you and your life. He does not lie. He is a good God. <laughs> And in the middle of the suffering is where he meets us the most. And so that's about all I think I'm going to say today. I'm going to pray for you guys and just anybody who's in this place with me. I want to pray for you. And and I am going to link a song below that's really been helping me. Um, and there's like so many songs, but there's a song called Another in the Fire. And as I play it, it just feels like so close to my heart. And so I hope that that blesses you guys as well. But I'm going to pray for you guys and um, just know like you that you're not alone in this and the Lord has a reason and that's what I rest on in the middle of feeling this way is just that he has a good plan. Uh, he always does, always does. And so I know it's hard in the middle of it and, and I don't quite know what it's going to look like at the other end. Um, but he is with us. He is, he is with us in this. It is okay to feel sad. It's okay to grieve. It's okay. And I validate you in this, even if this happened a while ago and you're still experiencing these emotions, like just know that he wants you in this. He wants you in this and he, he will, he's fighting for you and he always has been. And so I'm going to pray for you guys before I close the video out. Lord God, I just pray for every person that's watching this, God. Every single person, God, and especially for the women, especially for the women that have experienced a loss, Lord. God, I pray that they would experience your comfort like I have, Jesus. I pray that as hard as it is and as, as easy it is as it is, God, to shut, your, shut yourself from you, God, I pray that their hearts would be open to you and that they would grieve with you, God, and that they would run to you for comfort because you are the greatest comforter. You always have been. You always will be, Lord. And so I pray for these women, God. I pray that they would experience your peace and your comfort, God. And I pray for these promises, every promise, Lord, that is represented here. Anybody watching that promise that they've been waiting for and it still hasn't happened. And in Psalm 13, when, when the question is, how long, Lord, will you forget me? God, I pray that they would take those questions to you. I pray that they would wrestle with you. I pray that they would pray with you, God, and they would, they would hash out these emotions, Lord, and they would find, Lord, how to walk through this with you, God, instead of away from you, Jesus. I pray that over them in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord. And I pray you would bless every single person that's watching, Lord, whatever pain they've experienced in their life, would they run to you every time, every trial, would they run to you, Jesus, every time, God, and would they know that you are their strength and their comfort and their peace, unlike anybody else in this world, God. You are the constant. So I pray, Lord, that everyone would know your truth, your joy, that there is hope in your name, Jesus. I pray that over every person. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So um, I'm linking that song below in the description box for you guys and just know that I am praying for you guys. Um, I really am as I'm thinking about this, you know, in my own, my own life. Like it just brings me to think about all of the people who've experienced this that I know and just my heart goes out to you all and um, it is really hard and so just know you're not alone and that God is going to meet you here and he loves you more than you could ever, ever imagine. So in the middle of it, remember that. Remember his unfailing love for you. I'll, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>